Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Calmston Farm here in Farming Simulator 22 with me see what it is the start of July so we have got two more fields to harvest our two oat fields up here on the north part of the map so I'm just bringing the head trailer down for the combine look that header tra that header does not look all that secure on there i have to admit it's a little bit close to the uh, tractor i think anyway we will uh, we'll just uh, deal with that pop that down there move the tractor out of the way So it is out of the way. And what we'll do is we'll hop into our lovely harvester of power. We can commence with the oak harvest. system fully operational um, quick one got some new equipment as well ladies and gents <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that later meanwhile let's get rid of this of the harvest as well. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. Right. Harvest time. I'm gonna do a. I'm not gonna drop straw on the headland. I've decided, but I will probably drop straw on the up and down rows. And then we can bale the straw and sell the bales. Much like we did on field um, 20. Or am I confusing that with uh, the multiplayer server? Just thinking now. Have I sold straw bales in this series, or was that on the server? It might have been on the server. That's a bit confusing. I can't remember what I've done in single player, because I've only played more recently on the server version of the map. Which is one of the reasons why, ladies and gents, this series, the Calmston Farm series, will be coming to an end with episode 100. One, episode 100 will be the final episode in the series and that will be my final time playing on this current map and save. I'm just going to say that ahead of time so people know that we're coming to the end. Um, and then it'll be time to move on to a new map and then that way multiplayer will be separate from my single player let's plays. So I'll be starting on a nice new map and um, new series. Palmston will, you know, 100 episodes, I think, is a, a good point to end the series on. 
Well, obviously, Riverview will carry on for the time being. Because that's not had anywhere near as many episodes yet. will be a good point to wrap up our adventures here on Carmsden and move on to something new and then that means I get to play three different maps each week <laughs> which is going to be more fun for me and less confusing but yes as we start this lovely new week well it's a little bit late start of the week it's Tuesday today as I'm recording this um, I didn't do any recording yesterday on Monday. I, I had a day off Monday from Farm Sim and I just played other things and enjoyed other things. Uh, we had FarmCon obviously this past weekend from Germany, from Mannheim in Germany, the John Deere factory over there where Giants did their farm con. Um, I don't know what to say really about FarmCon that isn't going to be, um, <laughs> isn't going to be bad. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that enjoy the fact that I as a content creator do not hold back and if something isn't right, I say it isn't right. I don't, you know, I don't turn a blind eye to the problems and I am no way going to give Giants a pass if something's not right. Um, FarmCon to me seemed to be one massive commercial. Uh, that was my view. You know, other people might disagree with me. The whole event just seemed to be one big commercial for Giants to try and sell us more stuff. Um, Vermeer DLC, um, Ho Pumps and Hoses DLC, the Platinum Expansion DLC. It was just one big, here's stuff we want you to buy. And at no point during the whole farm kit con did they mention about when they're actually going to fix and update the base game that we've already bought and we're sat here playing. We didn't get any updates when we're going to get any fixes, any patches, you know, none of that. We didn't talk about any of that. Just here's some more stuff, buy it. Give us your money. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I kind of sat there the whole time during FarmCon just thinking they're just trying to sell me stuff. And to be honest, I want them to fix what I've already bought. <laughs> I want them to fix what I've already bought so I can enjoy playing what I've already bought before I'm remotely interested in buying anything else. Um, so yeah, that didn't sit well with me. Uh, another thing that I thought was just way off base was the, the video they did. I don't know if you see it during FarmCon. They put out a video which was how we test mods. And it was uh, obviously, it's supposed to be a tongue-in-cheek video. It's supposed to be a humorous video showing how they test mods and well, how, well, not how, obviously how they don't test mods. The problem with that is, I don't think Giants really read the room. And that, I don't know if you, again, for foreign viewers, American viewers, European viewers, people who, you know, maybe are, you know, English speaking white natives by default. In England, we have an expression called read the room. And it comes from it, you know, if you're like, um, if you, you're an entertainer, you're, uh, you know, a comedian for example and you're doing a performance before you deliver your material and tell your jokes just 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 read the room have a look round and make sure you know your audience and the fact that your audience is going to react well to what it is you're about to say and what it is you're about to discuss you know 
so as not to cause offence to people, you know, and stuff. And I don't think that that video, how we test mods, was a great example of Giants reading the room. Because if you listen to the community, and if you look at the community, and if you go to Giants forums, and look at their forums, and read their forums, right now the community does not have a lot of faith in Giants testing. Either mod testing, game testing, QA testing. Don't have a lot of faith in it. We don't believe there's a lot of testing going on. The vast, you know, the, the community as a whole, if I, you know, if I was to speak for the community, I think the community would say right now, we don't believe there's a whole lot of testing going on of anything, whether that be the game or the mods. Because surely if they tested things, they would see the problems that we players have. So that video that Giants put out, how we test mods, that just, to me, that fell very bad. That came across on the completely wrong side of, yeah, you shouldn't really, you know, come on Giants, you know, read the room Giants. You shouldn't be making fun of how bad you are at testing things. How bad you are at releasing updates and fixes to things. Because right now, that's a very sour subject with your players and your community. Who are not happy that we have not had a, a patch or update to problems reported, you know, two or three months ago. Major game breaking issues that were reported two or three months ago. And you're not interested in fixing those. You're more interested and concerned with trying to sell us the next thing wrong we don't like that stop trying to make us buy new things before you fix the current thing <laughs> okay read your room know your audience giants but yeah the whole farm con, it was, um, it was quite funny, I thought, some of it. Some of it was quite funny. And I did have a bit of a laugh and a chuckle with uh, some some players in the community. Why does my monitor keep flickering on and on? My monitor keeps turning off. That's weird. a concern. It got hot. It got hot. Oh, I didn't quite make it to the end. Look. Right, I need my tractor. JCB's really bad at turning. But yeah, there was there was a couple of moments obviously from Farm Pond which were good to laugh at. One of my favourites was during the um the precision farming presentation from the EIT guys. And that the people that have basically come up with this whole precision farming concept and been trying to develop it and obviously the real the real real life precision farming and then obviously got giants involved to do obviously the mod for the game their presentation was quite interesting and then it got absolutely hilarious when they opened it up to question and answers from the actual farm sim players at the show um the actual you know real players and one guy one guy asked a question to the eit guy about how 
how is it going to affect his ability to deliver stuff via train? Or, or transport stuff via train? And the EIT guy was like, huh? What, what, what are you on about? <laughs> and this guy, again, he, he, he asked the question again. And it's like, and people were a bit confused as to what he was, you know, like, what's he going on about? Um, and it's like, oh, he's transporting stuff, wants to transport more stuff in game via train. Um, which has obviously got nothing to do with precision farming. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, that's a big. But he would not let it go. Even though this EIT guy explained several times that he's not involved in any of that. He's not involved in the making of the game, the publishing, you know. And they think he's he, 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 he's just he's be you know works for a company that's trying to develop sustainable farming techniques for the future and, and you know be more environmentally friendly farming for the future it doesn't really have you know uh, it's got nothing to do with <laughs> you know the game this guy would not let it go he just kept asking about the bloody trains train system went and stuff and you could this this EIT guy was like um maybe we, uh, we could get somebody from Giants to come um, um talk to this guy and answer this guy and then somebody somebody on somebody I think one of the, the one of the Giants guy who normally does who the last couple of years has presented FarmCon when it was online only um he was there and he was like, um, "Can we get uh, Can we get Sam to come down? And uh, yeah, we've got a we've got a question on the floor here. Can we get Sam to come down and talk to the gentleman? Um, he's got a question about trains. He has. He's got a question about trains. And it was so funny that bit was. And I honestly thought that they literally you could tell that by the time this guy, you know, this guy had gone on and on and on and basically derailed." the Q&A session of the um, presentation. I'm pretty convinced that the farm conga, the EIT guy, just wanted a sniper to take the guy out. <laughs> just, and when the guy, when the farm sim guy was like, Sam, Sam, can you get Sam to come back? I pretty much thought that was the call to have the sniper take him out. <laughs> you're just gonna, you're just gonna see this guy's head explode. <laughs> Live on stream. Question answered. <laughs> Question answered. Problem solved. <laughs> so yeah, I bought myself some new little tractors, ladies and gents. I've got a couple of these little um, Antonio Carrero jobbies ready for doing me grapes and me olives. I bought two of them, absolutely identical in every way, shape and form, including the license plates. Hey, Giants, that's another bug. When you buy multiple, if you stay in the shop menu and just keep buying, you know, and buy, just keep buying the same tractor, the license plate doesn't change, which is obviously not very realistic at all because every vehicle has to have its own separate registration. Certainly in the UK, you can't have vehicles driving around on the same every vehicle has to have its own separate license plate and registration can't have multiple vehicles using the same license plate and then i bought me grape harvester i did i bought me grapes and we've obviously got our olive one over here that says olive on it this one doesn't say grapes on it but it should do that's interesting this one says olive why doesn't the other one say great? But anyway, we need our lovely... We're going to do some bales, ladies and gents. We're going to bale the straw. Uh, how much straw do I have in storage? 838,936 litres. Probably not going to need to save any then. 
is my quench that. So yeah, I'm going to bail it and I'm going to sell it. We might as well. Check the animals actually, see how they're doing food wise. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. What I potentially should have done, of course, was put our um, trailer onto unloading duty. Auto drive, seeing as the uh, worker is doing the harvesting now. Probably a good thing. Good thinking, Batman. Although... I've got a funny feeling I've left a trailer In the tip point. Really, I'm not coping well with gate posts today, ladies and gents. I'm not getting all the gate. Yeah. See, that wouldn't have worked then, would it? If I'd have just set that auto drive up, he would have got down here and gone, ah. I can't actually unload because. The um, trailers in the way. We'll move that. And there's all our current little. Dobbies. Right, he's ready. He's going to be on field. Okay. You are going to be harvesting. Field two game two farm silo one tip. I think that's a good strategy. Help if I could move the camera. unload automatically the worker is obviously going to summon him when he needs him automagically the bailer Curiosity, and why is this this guy not moving? I 
because he wants to wait till he's maximum full. Fine. We'll let him. We'll just let him do what he wants to do. Don't argue with the man. <laughs> Take a screenshot for the thumbnail. We'll carry on. Picking up the straw wind run with the best baler in the world. And that's kind of another reason why I'm not that excited for the Vermeer DLC. I certainly ain't interested in the Platinum expansion because I have no interest in logging. So don't care for the platinum expansion the volvo stuff or the new map not interested in that dlc at all the vermeer dlc the baylor stuff and that i was kind of excited about until i saw the video of it and realized that giants still don't know how to make the uh, the pickups on the baylor actually pick up the wind rows correctly without missing bits so unfortunately unfortunately still gonna have to use modded Bailers and loading wagons in in the game going forward because giants still don't actually make the uh, the pickups the correct width on the machines. The pickup area is the correct width so that they don't leave bits behind when you're doing your windrows. Look, if I'd have just gone over that big hump of straw with a vanilla baler, it would have missed most of that. Same with this bit up here. If I go over this with my baler, it will pick up most of this. In fact, it picks up all of it, look. Oh, I see. So simple. Such a simple and easy little fix. And yet giants can't do it. And unfortunately, with the DLC balers, they're going to be locked inside the DLC file. You're not going to be able to edit them. You're not. Unfortunately. So there's no way to fix the DLC stuff, which means you're not going to use it. Potentially, or I'm not. Harvesters harvesting. Combines combining. Tractors running off to deliver. Pretty sure it was this field I collected all the bales from. Yeah, it must have been on the multiplayer server because I took them to the... Um, Cell point, the bale cell point just up there. I didn't have to go very far at all. Right, I probably should go and get a back my bale trailer though. Um, I'm gonna remove the honey while I'm here. There's a lot of pallets there getting in the way. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'll take the big boy. Go get the bale trailer. Wonder why Mr. JCB man seems to be having a little bit of trouble with unloading that truck, that trailer. dude sitting there. Just want to point that out. <laughs> We're gonna have to go and sort him out in a second. He's gone and got himself all in a wedge tail. Bailing? We are bailing. These bales stick on better than they do on the other auto load trailer. They stick on to this trailer better. These bale trailers, the auto load bale trailers, are actually better than the auto load specialization ones. Because on the auto load specialization trailers, the bales stay loose on the trailer. And they, the round ones can fall off as you're driving around. Yes, you can put the straps on, but there's a little moment, there's that little second, brief split second, between the bale going onto the trailer and the strap supply. That means with round bales, they do tend to fall off a lot when driving around the field, trying to pick them up. That's a problem I have on the server all the bloody time, losing me round bales. <laughs> So yeah, why is the trailer, wherever he is, yeah dude, you, you just, you're just not anywhere near, are you? sworn he was capable of doing this job. Maybe it's got something to do with the steering axles being on. driving again. Excellent. He's waiting to be unloaded. Meanwhile, I can carry on releasing bales everywhere. Right then, ladies and gents. We have reached the end of today's episode. Harvesting has commenced. We've got this field to do. We've got the field over there to do. That is our basic plan for July. Then we've got to come, obviously, lime spread the field, give it a bit of a ploughing, and then we'll do some direct drillage, all that good stuff. We'll give it some um, digestate spreading, 
liquid fertilizing keep everybody happy uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to go and move some bales because that's dropped right where the bloody trailer's gonna need to go hasn't it isn't it so we'll pick that one up first I'll move these two because the trailer's gonna want to come there Hard work running around as one man. But as Michael Knight taught us in the 80s, one man can make a difference. So, ladies and gents, thanks for watching today's episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you again very soon with some more great Farbsim content. But for now, from me, this cheerio and goodbye, ladies and gents. <laughs>